Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crypto Scene Investigation, where we look at various cryptocurrency projects and we ask ourselves, is this really worth investing in? Today we'll be looking at NFT books. Now, if you like what I do on this channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, keep in mind that this is only to be used for inspirational education and entertainment purposes. Everything I say in this video is not to be intended for any legal purposes. Um, and if you do end up uh, enjoying the video, you're very welcome to comment. And if you don't enjoy it, or you have any facts which you want to say about this project, which we have not gone over, you are very welcome to comment. But I ask that you be generous and kind with um, the comments which you write. Cool. NFT books. Um, when I heard of this, I was like, man, this is cool. Uh, so let's find out what is NFT books first before we dive deep in into this, for those of you who don't know. <clears throat> NFT books. NFT BS is a BSC token that was launched on 7th of June, 2021. NFT BS not only allows readers to read a book at the lowest cost, but also helps author to earn more profits. NFT BS is created to bridge the gap between readers and authors while giving investors an opportunity to make profits by buying and holding the token in their wallets. 2% of every buy and sell is, is redistributed between holders. NFTBS envisions to transform the world of book readings, making it become more affordable and more accessible to many people. So that all sounds good. Um, currently it says that it's only available on PancakeSwap. Um, so yeah, uh, and if we have a look at the general sort of stats of, of how it's been going since then, uh, we can see, so there is a lot of max supplies. So I'm not going to read that number, but you guys can see that, that, that they're one followed by like a bunch of zeros. <clears throat> um, yeah, so they had this massive dip there. I don't know what, what probably caused that. Um, but then we're sort of sitting around this mark here, so I'm not really going to be reading these numbers out. Um, but a lot of people are sort of talking about it being great, cool, and all that jazz. Uh, but we will be having a look at some on-chain metrics to sort of find this jazz out. Um, now, this is their video um, talking about what the project is. We're not going to be watching the full thing, but I'll do a bit of an, ex an explanation. So, something which I don't like about this video um, is... Oh, these guys have got it in 1080p! <laughs> hey! better than some other crypto projects. Um, the art style looks pretty good and stuff, but uh, the person who edited the video, I don't think did a very good job because they kind of like did this weird cut slash slice with the music. Um, <clears throat> and also it does feel a bit kind of like cheaply made and especially because they don't actually have a real person who is um, narrating this. Um, and it looks like a bunch of, I guess, stock pictures if you want to call it sort of that. So yeah. Um, so I don't really like the look of the video very much, but that's just like a personal sort of thing. Um, and they've got 988 subs, which is pretty cool. So let's have a look at what we can find on the Binance Smart Chain. Uh, so the top wallet, which owns 24%, it says it's dead. The next wallet, uh, NFT Books Deployer, is currently sitting at 4.4%, um, which is high-ish, but it's not like crazy high. Velox Coins bit. Uh, I feel as though that is probably going to that is probably an exchange which is just not been which is not showing up on coin market cap um that's just my assumption behind that i can't be too certain with that um and as we can see this one has got liquidity through pancake swap and here are the, and here are the other sort of top wallets so <clears throat> in terms of um in terms of uh i guess percentage dis distributed it doesn't really look that bad to me to be honest like it's it's all right it's it's fine it's it's not really threatening. There's nothing we can see here which is which is telling us that it is threatening other the fact other than the fact that it's just a huge amount under here. Uh, but maybe these guys just have big goals. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so let's have a look at what we can see from BSC check. It says buy tax and sell tax are both 12%. That is incredibly high for a buy and a sell. Um, just so that you guys are like aware of that jazz. Uh, token owner says that they currently hold 4.46% and the ownership has not been renounced. Um, and we can see why that could be an issue on the next page. Um, and so dev wallets 0.46% and burned or locked shows 96%. Cool. So there's nothing which really stands out which is that threatening so far, other than the fact that the buy and the sell tax is, is a little bit intense. Um, and the token owner owning only 4%, which is quite a decent amount but that would be this one right here i believe um <clears throat> anyway we move on token sniffer now token sniffer is not happy with this uh <laughs> with this with this token um buy and selfie uh yep so same 12 percent thing 
Um, no prior similar token contracts. Now here is something which is quite concerning. Um, these are pretty much all of these similar token contracts to this one, which which um, have been related in the past. And have a look at all of these. All of these, in some way or another, have been flagged due to some level of bug, hack, or scam. Um, so that sort of makes it a little bit concerning from my uh, opinion. So this one, for instance, was uh, blacklisted for prior scams. Uh, MetaMask, which is interesting, not an official MetaMask token, so that one was also another prior scam. Um, T.me, geez louise, uh, blacklisted for other prior scams. So, as you can see, there's just been kind of like one after the other, um, various sort of things, sweaty FOMO. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, so here are two other pretty concerning things which we can see. So Source does not contain a max transaction amount. Um, so it means that they can set the max transaction, which could be a, a honeypot risk. So for instance, right? So because these have all of these giant millions, billions, I don't even know what you'd call that. Uh, if they're to lower the max transaction amount, you may only be able to sell like one at a time, for instance. Like, that is that is a honeypot risk right there. So maybe you can buy a bunch, but maybe you can't sell a bunch. I mean, at least that's one way which I understand it. The source code contains a function which can modify the transaction fee. So another reason is that they can change this transaction fee um, to actually to actually either increase it so high that when you sell, you barely get any money left, or they can, um, I guess, completely decrease decrease it all the way down low so that you don't have to pay for a fee but the fact that they're currently starting out with about 12 percent is quite high in my personal opinion um so it says tokens burn so keep in mind these analytics are going not based off um oh, actually yeah cool never mind um so liquidity seems like liquid liquidity is pretty good um, and then as we can see, a similar 96% of liquidity has been burned slash locked as well. We'll briefly actually open a poo coin just to have a look at how much liquidity they have available. And it looks like they have 300,000 um, uh, available in the BNB LP holdings. So yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, let's have a look at what Moon Arch says. So tells us it's been around for eight months. Um, also talks about the liquidity as well, saying that, that there's 361,000. Um, let's have a look at some of these labels here to see if there's anything which is concerning. Uh, ownable lock could be used to fake renounce. So fake renounce can be a bit concerning as well. It has been done in the past. Um, so that's just something which could co could be a cause for, for concern. Um, so it says that this function here can be used to, to once again change the fees and also um, so change so set liquidity fee percent and tax fee percent and also a max transaction percent limit. So we know that much from from what we could see on, from token sniffer as well. It's interesting how these aren't in red though because yeah you I feel like that's pretty important you know this honeypot risk thing. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so let's have a look. So it says 69% is currently unlocked. Uh, owner owns 4%, burnt 24%, and then liquidity is 1.38%. So that is actually not a huge amount of liquidity. Uh, so I believe that that is 999 trillion plus, um, <laughs> which, yeah, as we know, it is big. So it's like whatever the next number after a trillion is, I think. Um, <clears throat> so uh, unlocked out of that liquidity and 96% uh, of, of, of that is locked. Um, we'll see if we can actually find out how long it's going to be locked for, though. So we can't actually be looking at the locks, which is uh, a bit concerning. Um, and so we can't actually see those liquidity locks, which is a bit strange. Let's have a look at some of the Twitter stats. So they currently have 18,000 followers, um, and it's been going up pretty steadily. So 570 in the last 30 days. So good stuff. User created on July 10th. Um, so this all lines up pretty well. There were some interesting things which are quite fascinating to look at. So it looks like these guys are from Australia. Um, and then so you guys can pause and have a read of that. But it's quite interesting. So they sort of talk about um, how, like, you're not really... There doesn't really, like, have any copyright law impact. Um, because, it's like, it's like a different, I don't know, sort of thing. It's it's interesting, but, but strange. You guys can look into it. Um, but we will have a look at some of these comments as well. So as we can see... Um, People are just kind of like, people are pretty cool about this, eh? Like, they're just, they don't have a huge amount of comments. Um, I mean, it's pretty authentic. So this is a, um, so this is a, uh, a thing regarding NFT books. 
um, which is cool as well. So yeah, I think um, I think uh, yeah, people just they kind of seem pretty enthusiastic about this project, to be honest, um, from what I can see. But maybe there's something maybe there's something behind the scenes which we are not not missing not entirely sure now google trends doesn't actually show anything from what i could see uh, i tried going 12 months and then so 90 days and 30 days can't see anything on there <clears throat> uh, so let's go and have a look at, at a part of their main website so we we'll talk a little bit about why we won't really be looking too much into the why but one question i did actually have uh, which i wrote on their telegram group was how does the author get paid from this um, and so they told me to read their website and their white paper um, I didn't read through the whole white paper because, like, okay. Um, oh, okay, so this shows some of the token distribution. Cool. Um, I was actually a little bit concerned about this because I couldn't see this on their uh, white paper. Um, airdrop developer, then we launched. Okay. And where's the team? So it says marketing 20%. Um, so we actually do see that. Uh, so they actually have 24%, um, which has been burned, which is cool. And then the developer, okay, being 4%. So actually, these guys look like they are definitely sticking um, to what, what they had initially set out, which is really good in my opinion. Um, the fact that the actual uh, um, metrics on the, on the BSC scan actually does confirm what we are reading here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's awesome. All right, uh, and add liquid pool. So 55%, okay. All right, all right, all right. So I believe that this marketing thing is probably likely going to be belonging to the team at some point. Um, that 20% there. So yeah, I don't know how that distribution is going to work because um, it doesn't look like we have any sort of vesting, uh, which we can see so far with this project. Um, yes, yeah, so that's quite interesting. So this is a part of the author page. If you do want to have a read through it, um, you can definitely do that if you want to find out more about it. Uh, this is their this is their white paper. Um, Kind of cool. Uh, I didn't really, because I mean, I kind of like skim read this. Didn't really see much which sort of stood stood out to me, to be honest. Um, I mean, yeah, like the information which I really want to know is more about the token distribution, but couldn't find that on here. In fact, I don't think there's anything on here. We can see roadmap, uh, value and token. Um, so for every transaction by or sell, 2% is sent to existing NFT BS holders as a reward. Well, where does the 12% come from, baby girl? Where is the 12% coming from? Um, I must be missing something. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so other things about the website. So I don't really know why this this image here is like super low quality, uh, but if you can like see that, it's pretty bad. Um, and so also some of the English is like a little bit weird in some areas. Like, for example, a $20 movie production industry can watch hundreds of movies, but how many books can $20 buy? Um, the current, yeah, so I mean, um, I don't know, just like, that kind of sounded fine the way which I read it, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> maybe it didn't and I wasn't even listening to myself. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, just there are some like areas here and there which are about, oh. You know, usually you, I mean, like, other than that, I think that the website actually looks pretty clean, to be honest. Like, the, they do have a pretty, like, especially this picture right here. I mean, they have a pretty clean and pretty crisp looking website, from my opinion. Um, yeah, so uh, we can see a part of their roadmap and what they have done already. Um, <clears throat> website relaunch extreme. That hasn't been done. Interesting. I wonder what that is about. Uh, but let's talk about some other things. Listing uh, tier one CEX. I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't see this being listed um, like pr on anything like Binance or Coinbase or Crypto.com for like a long while. <laughs> FTX. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't see that being. Um, I mean, maybe Gemini. <laughs> maybe Gemini, uh, but yeah. Um, so they also have the mainnet NFT books platform coming out on in stage two of 2022. Uh, and in stage three, they also talk about release and app so readers can borrow books and increase security. Cool. All right. Um, so here are some of the team members as well. So I tried looking on YouTube to see if I could find any uh, interviews with these guys. Couldn't find any interviews with these guys, um, but they do have, the, have that YouTube channel, which I did uh, mention earlier. Um, and the other thing, so co-founder, co-founder, and co-founder slash CEO. I did reverse image search. Um, I'm not going to try pronouncing names. 
Um, I'm gonna say, you know, I'm just gonna do it, ciao. Um, so I tried uh, reverse image searching this guy to make sure that he was a legit dude. He is a legit dude. Uh, I couldn't find anything which sort of um, resembled anything on Google. Uh, so here are some interesting things. So it looks like, um, so when I go to these guys' LinkedIn's, um, I don't know if you can see the link down the bottom there. Uh, you possibly can't. Um, if I, whoop, that might help. I think, uh, nope, it doesn't help. Cool. Um, <laughs> so when I actually go to their LinkedIn's themselves for Roland and Easton or Houston, um, they actually just go to the NFT sort of book page. Um, it doesn't really tell us who, like anything about them themselves, which is a little bit annoying to be honest. Um, but for Chow, when we have a look at some of his background, um, so he's the co-founder of NFT Books and he is the CEO as well and a founder of something called Pataz Australia. Um, I've not heard of them before. Um, and we have a comment by Vi or V, V fam. Um, oh, we can have a listen to it. Her name is V. Cool. We now know how to pronounce it. Um, so she looks pretty experienced. I mean, she's got over 500 uh, connections, which is cool. Um, she's been doing a whole bunch of things, very go-getter type of lady from what we can see. And she's currently the marketing director of NFT books and she's been a sales manager, um, as well as sales director. So I think that's, I think that's pretty cool. She's, she's probably one of the most transparent people on all of the NFT books people. So this guy's only got 11 connections and he's got like entrepreneur in December, 2021 and <laughs> June, 2021. Um, administrative manager. So I don't know, man. Maybe the maybe like these guys just didn't have LinkedIn's before, and then the company's like, "Yo, you guys need to get a, a, a LinkedIn," and then they just like chose a few of their friends to add or something. I'm not sure. I don't actually know. Um, Hong Huang. Oh gosh, cringe. Um, so he is a senior. So he's a designer, graphic designer, uh, design team lead. But what do we see missing from here? We don't actually see. Well, what we want to see, which is from NFT books, right? Um, so I feel like he's definitely got some good experience in terms of being a designer, but we don't really see much. And he's also only got uh, 36 connections as well. So in terms of the team being doxxed, I would not consider these guys being doxxed. Um, so we can see some partners down here as well. Uh, Coinsbit, um, they actually did mention something on their page about them. And yeah, that just looks like uh, Dex from what I can see. Um, none of these names, I mean, is Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko really partners, or do you just list them on, uh, or do they just list your coin on their website so you're calling them partners? I mean, I wouldn't call like these first three partners, um, these last four possibly, uh, but these first three no, I would not consider those guys partners. Um, and also the DPI is also kind of baddish on that as well. So, yeah. Um, so here's some of my final thoughts regarding this project. So. The main question which uh, we should be asking ourselves is should we invest in this? I'm personally not going to invest in this um, because I think that a part of what we can see, number one, when I actually did try messaging um, on the NFT books group regarding the um, regarding the 12% uh, buy and sell fee um, and I couldn't find anything on their website. I mean, it might be hidden somewhere in their white paper. Um, the fact that we don't really have any Google Trends as well um, for NFT books is also another concerning thing. Um, yeah, I mean, the market cap, we don't see the market cap currently, uh, but it says that it's ranked as like 5,000. Um, you know, I mean, if you do think it's going to go up to 500x, look, x500, another 500, another 500. Man, this is going to get 500x if you invest, guys. Don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Um, yeah, so... Um, invest if you want to invest because you understand their project better than I do and because you believe in the project um, otherwise from what from what I have kind of deduced from what we've looked at today I don't think it's that safe to invest in I mean these are these are pretty safe but there's just a bunch of other reasons why I think that you shouldn't invest but anyway thank you for watching guys much love. Got a Patreon. Please like, subscribe. Please be kind in the comments if you do want to comment. Um, and maybe you can share some info which I haven't sort of added into this. Um, but yeah, we aren't just a bunch of shillers and maxis here. Although there might be some hidden ones there. 
Anyway, much love, guys. Ta-ta. Fairly well.